as a female leader, who was your inspiration? Hmm, <laughs> that's an interesting one. <laughs> um, unusually for me, maybe it was my parents. Ah. Um, because I was born in a family of 11 children. My father was a primary school teacher on a very small salary, but uh, they had a focus. My father is late, but my mother is still living. She's quite old now. Uh, but uh, they had a focus on education where um, the, the first thing you heard as soon as you were old enough to, to capture things and keep them is in this house, what matters is education, education, education. You started off talking about uh, we as uh, leaders, leaders that are women. Yes. Uh, and leaders that are women in Africa yes. and so on. I think that's an interesting platform because uh, I think the challenges uh, or the responsibility maybe in some ways is greater than uh, uh, say for many years uh, I lived outside of Africa. I'm sure you have done as well. So when you go to Africa you realize that even by getting up in the morning and just breathing you are being somebody's role model whether you've chosen it or not. Some, somebody somewhere has chosen you to be their role model and they're modeling themselves on you, regardless of whether you know or not. That's a responsibility that's very massive, because what it means is you don't know at which point you're being watched, and you don't know what you're doing when you're being watched. So if a young girl happens to be watching you when you're doing something that's really, mm-hmm, then uh, you, you know that you're influencing the possible behavior and development of that young girl without very knowing. Very much. Yeah, we, we, we're focusing on, on girls. Uh, yes. But the other half, the boys as well. I mean, having a, a role model as a mm -hmm. female leader, yeah. what, does it, what does it say to, to boys? What do you think? I, I, I think uh, um, I have come across quite a lot of boys and men, like say, uh, there's quite a lot of uh, uh, communication, say from teachers, for example, male mm -hmm. teachers who say, oh, you're just my role model. Uh, Interestingly, what most of them tend to see when they're saying that, they're looking at the things you're doing. Whereas the girls come and say, oh, the way you are, and so on. So there's a slight difference, but it's still role modeling. So mm -hmm. I think you're right to raise the issue of what about the boy child? Because uh, if I take it to the uh, platform of education and the need for role models, positive role models, uh, we can talk about, for example, early pregnancies child marriages and so on. Sometimes these things happen between uh, peers in the school. Mm. And so role modeling for boys is important as well because you want as boys as well as girls to know what is right, to have set of values that can uh, provide them a compass through life. And uh, uh, when it comes to that, I think it's the role of leaders and it's the role of educationists to make sure that you're making sure that you uh, provide equal access to uh, uh, environments that are affirming Mm. Uh, the values that society would like to see, the values that are about building a wholesome individual. And uh, I think that's very important in the context of Malawi because a lot of work has been done with the girl child. What we're now beginning to see in the education system is that um, uh, on, on many fronts, girls are beginning to outperform boys, which is good. But if that is a sign that somewhere we took our foot off the pedal, we focus more on the one gender than the other, then I think uh, we need to very quickly redress the, the balance. I'm seeing boys lacking self-confidence. Uh -huh. And I was thinking whether it was just the focus on girls all the time and sort of neglecting the boys it, a bit in education. Um, it is part of it, but uh, when we started talking, you talked about the importance of context. Mm -hmm. Even that question, the way it's been asked, the assumptions from which the question is coming suggest that uh, most boys feel self-confident. Most boys have parents who are self-confident. But is that the case? And it's it also not. suggests that most boys spend time looking and idolizing their parents. Maybe that's not the case. Again, that's very cultural, uh, culturally uh, contextualized in yeah. the sense that uh, there are certain cultures where after a certain age, children, boys and girls, do not spend that much time with their, with their parents.
parents. Uh, and this is true mainly of outdoor cultures because uh, I raised my children to quite a, a mature age uh, in the cultures of the no uh, global north and where life is lived in a nuclear family, mostly indoors. If you go out, it's a nuclear family going out. So you spend much more time with the children. Whereas uh, back in Malawi, raising children, uh, is there's a stage at which you win them off, <laughs> including yes. the physical and emotional presence. It's not always as intense as it, it, it gets in, in the different settings. So, um, but our experience is that uh, uh, most of us now are beginning to ask the question, have we taken our attention away from the, the boy? Because uh, uh, I was about to share that for me, gender is about not removing the advantage from the person who seems to have the advantage, but checking to see what are the obstacles in the path of the one who is disadvantaged and removing those obstacles so that if it was a hundred meter race mm. I would be saying as things stand in many societies the boy child seems to have the opportunity to start running from the zero mark the girl child seems to usually start 50 meters behind the zero mark now my job as educationist my job as a mother my job as a leader is to make sure that whatever is in the path of that child the girl child is removed so that that girl child should use use her God-given skills to come on the zero start line and start the race together with the boy child. Mm. And that way you find that very they can true. compete very well. So uh, increasingly, I think, uh, with our youth as well, and the youth in Malawi are becoming very vibrant, I have to say, we, we need to do a lot more, but uh, they are awake and they are watching and they're keeping track of us, the grown-ups, leaders, what we're doing, are we doing it in their name? Because Malawi is predominantly a youthful population. Uh, our age group is actually in the minority. Last thing that was in my mind, if um, three, three words mm -hmm. that you say to female leaders, to female mm -hmm. educationalists, mm -hmm. what would you say? Three words. Three words. Extremely important uh, because we could be the game changers. Thank you.